Okay, here we are for another day of my journey with Sunny to a loose rain. I cannot promise anybody how long it'll take, and I really don't even know what my complete outcome is going to be on Sunny. So I'm just inviting people to follow along with me. Um, I'm going to show you the exercises that I do every day, even if it's somewhat repetitive, just so that you can see her progress. Um, today we're going to go ahead and start on our flexing of the neck which is crucial to vertical flexion. If you want her to be able to respond on a loose rein and on a snaffle bit, we're gonna have to get her to vertically respond with just a little, a little nudge. So, again, to get the uh, lateral flexion um, over, over the side, she has been taught the body language to stand still. Today I'm doing a little something different with her. I was finding that she was just leaning on the rope and if you have a horse that's just leaning on the rope and is very stiff and not getting, not giving you the response of bringing their own head around, you can do this. But I'm sure that um, what I'm seeing today, which is a little more softness and sunny, is a result of the uh, almost daily work that I've been doing at bending her around like this. Her her head is coming around about to her shoulder, but really, you know, horses can stretch better than that. They can nip flies on their side. So you do want them to be able to bring their head all the way around. So what I'm going to do a little different is since she's not usually just willingly giving me her head, I'm just going to let go. And I can tell by just letting go that I've got some softness there because she's choosing to leave her head there. So if you're not getting your horse to just pull his own head around for you and then come in closer, yielding to the pressure, and what you really need is to get them more flexible, go ahead and show them that by bending around to that pressure, that if they will soften up and stay right there, that's their reward, the release. Good girl. I'm going to show you some more ground exercises. Now, I want to say that just because I put up a video that shows some ground exercises doesn't mean that that's all I'm doing. This is just a journey I'm taking Sunny on. So there's a lot of lunging that I've already taught her. I think you saw me in one of the other pictures that we were doing some intermediate lunging where she actually would go in a circle with my rope almost hanging on the ground. Now when a horse first starts learning to lunge, that's very difficult to do because the first thing they want to do is go all the way to the outside and pull on the rope. And you have to teach them to be supple and responsive enough to where they know what you want and they'll go around you on a slightly loose rein. So I invite you to look at some of my other videos where I've done some groundwork with both Stormy and Dolly. And they're not going to be in my playlist, but they are on my channel. So you're welcome to look at those. But uh, a lot of what we've done is teaching the horse to yield hind, hind quarters. Um, first of all, you want the horse always keeping two eyes on you because it's better to have their eyes on you than their feet on you. And I just think that's a good safe practice to always stand at approximately a 45 degree angle. That's a safe practice because if they decide to run off, they're not gonna run you over. And if they decide to kick, they're not gonna hit you. So it's a safe place to be. I don't have to be there with Sunny. She has never, ever, in her entire life tried to kick anybody that I know of. Certainly she's never tried to kick me. So hindquarters yielding is taught by you're in a rope halter and you move towards the hindquarters. Now she already moves because she knows my body language. But you can see it in my other video how it's taught with Stormy. Other videos. yield the hindquarters and this is 
all very automatic with her. And then I'm going to do a little bit more forehand work today because I really want her, I can already pirouette her on the front leg, but I want to be able to, to, to turn her, pirouette her, a 180 planting one foot. So right now I'm going a circle to the right. So I want the right foot to stay put. So all I want is for the left leg to move across the right leg. So a gentle push of the head and a gentle tap of the shoulder and I got a movement. Good girl. I'm going to reward that even though it wasn't a crossover. Some people might have to do a lot more groundwork training before they can ever get that. That's just where I am with Sunny. And this is going to make her more flexible, more responsive to my leg cues under saddle. It's going to mean that I'm able to just tap her right here and gently guide her head. And she's going to know that what I'm asking for, I didn't see if the back foot moved or not, is a right step. That's what she's going to know. So I'm going to try to go all the way around today. A little more turn. I want the back foot planted. I'm tapping the left shoulder and this is what you would do under saddle. And I clearly got a left step. A right step. She went to the right with her left leg. I've gathered up my rope and continuing my turn. You can do these exercises on a rainy day in your barn or on a cold day in your barn or on a hot day in your barn. No, okay, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I want the crossover, but she's in an awkward position. So I'll just take a right step. I'll be happy with that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that because of how she's positioned right now, that she's going to move that leg. But I'm hoping that she'll figure out that I want it planted. I want this front left, and I'm tapping her left shoulder to cross over. And she just really almost did. She put it right in front, like a marcher would do. Right in front, one foot right in front of the other. And I hope you can still see me. Because so far that back foot has stayed planted and I'm talking about her right back foot. Okay, there she moved it, but that, it was not bad. So I'm not going to like get on to her for it. I'm just going to keep asking her to keep it planted and keep asking for a crossover right here with the left. my crossover. Good girl. Now, good girl. So, instead of, you know, correcting the bad, which was just one foot, one little step out of place, I'm highly rewarding the good. Good girl. And she just went, <sighs> so, when, anytime they do that, you know they're relaxing. She's very relaxed right now. And she's welcome in my space because she respects my space. Ready? Leave that back foot. Let's move. Good girl. I still didn't get the crossover, but I kept the, the back foot stayed planted. She needs to cross over. Here we go. Good girl. Good. That's a wonderful job. And, you know, all of that is just going to turn her into a much more responsive horse. Now, I showed you the other day of her lunging on a loose line. And now I'm going to show you some more exercises that you can do to make your horse more obedient. On the lunge line, with lunging with respect, if you are having trouble with respect, you want to always keep your horse 
at a distance from you because a disrespectful horse is a horse that might try to harm you. And so keeping your distance, uh, you know, I just invite you to watch Clinton Anderson or a lot of other trainers do their initial um, lunge lining exercises where they are teaching the horse respect. Stacy Westfall has some great exercises that she does where she's teaching her horses to stay out of her space unless invited in. But Sunny's not a colt. She's an elderly horse that's already been taught respect, so I'm not really um, aiming to teach respect right now. Be just to teach loose taking a horse that's been trained on a hard bit and a long shanked bit and a curb, you know, to a um, snaffle bit and a loose rein. Sunny was always ridden on a very tight rein. And so I'm doing both ground and saddle exercises that will work toward achieving that end. I'm not teaching you how to train a colt. <laughs> so. And I'm not teaching myself how to train a colt. It's helpful. It's helpful when you lunge, according to some trainers, and a lot do this, to take your line and put it on the horse's neck. First of all, you don't have a rope flinging around that's going to scare them. Second of all, you have a good marker for your drive line. To make a horse go forward, you stay behind here. To make a horse slow down, you kind of move in front of them with a little bit of pressure on the lunge line. And then to make them go around, you know, you send them. And if they try to come in too tight on the circle, a little movement of the stick or lunge whip or whatever you're using to signal them to go out, they'll move away from it on their own pretty much automatically. So I'm going to teach some things called C turns. These are great to do if you're having trouble under saddle with some disobedience out on the trail and you're afraid to correct your horse with one rein stop, serpentines and bends and circles and tight circles, you can get down if you have the right kind of equipment and you can actually make your horse turn some seats on this, okay? You make them go around. Let me get my hands coordinated here. can do this with some precision and with some intensity that lets them know they're being worked. I'm not going to do that much intensity with Sunny. She didn't do anything wrong. But I can tell her to go around and then I can change hands and I can tell her to go around, make another C. I can change hands, tell her to go around, make another C. Now before you can do this, you've got to teach your horse that when you change hands and step toward their shoulder, that means to stay out of your space. Let's speed it up. obedient. Stay out of your space. Now you can lengthen it. And if you have to, you can use the end. 
and that'll usually get them going. And then change hands and use the end, okay? I'm not doing the greatest job at this because my name's not Clinton Anderson or Stacy Westfall. But you can do it. <laughs> I'm showing you what amateurs can do. I'm an amateur. Now, that is a good disciplinary exercise if you're out on the trail, and it's why you can ride with a Makati rain if you're riding in an O-ring snaffle, but you can also do that if you're walking from one place to another, or if you're working in the arena, or the round pen, and your horse decides to give you attitude, you can begin doing these circle turns, C turns, circles. But you have to turn them and step toward the shoulder. That's what gets them to start going the other direction, out away from you instead of over you. Turn, step, okay? And they go away from you. A step toward the shoulder drives the horse out and away. She's just too good. She's not giving me any resistance. And she doesn't have energy. So, showing some of these exercises with Sunny is kind of hard because she is so old. But, all this while, she's having to bend Yield her hindquarters. Okay? And I, if they're disobedient, I might make them back up. Back, back, back. Forward. Okay? So it's just work, work, work. You're going to give me attitude. You're going to get work, work, work. So, you know, you can ride with a Makati rein or you can bring a halter and a lunge line along. Um, keep a halter under their bridle whatever it takes. But if you don't want to discipline under saddle, because everything I just did can be done under saddle. And that wasn't discipline to her, it was exercise. <laughs> so that's my exercise for the day, is your seat turns. They weren't near as energetic as you would get out of a young horse. And uh, maybe I'll give you the opportunity to see what would happen with a young horse, but you'd probably get some rollbacks.